everybody, Missy here. In today's video, we're going to talk about the Bohr model of the atom. So you've probably seen the Bohr model before. It's a representation of the atom where we have a nucleus or a dot in the center as our nucleus and then rings around the outside of our nucleus that kind of looks like the solar system. Um, you've seen them in middle school, although you might not have remembered doing them. So we're going to go over them today, give you a refresher on the Bohr model, and then look at how we can draw Bohr models of ions and isotopes, which is something new that we haven't talked about before. First thing we need to do is write down our definition for the Bohr model of the atom. The Bohr model of the atom represents the atom by a circle in the middle to represent the nucleus and rings with dots for the electrons. Okay. The way that we make our Bohr model is based off of where the element is on the periodic table. So if we take a look at our periodic table of the elements, we look at this here, we can see that on our periodic table, we have groups, which are our columns, and then we have rows, which go across. And our rows are our periods. Now, we need to know the period number for each of our elements that we're looking at to make our Bohr models of. So if you have a periodic table or if you want to edit one that you have, we'll draw in, remember our periods go down. So period one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so these are our periods. Remember that on our atom squ our element square, we have our symbol, the name, its average atomic mass, which we won't use. But then this number in the upper left is its atomic number. So hydrogen is 1, lithium is 3, sodium 11, and so on. So that number there is our atomic number, and we're going to need that today. So that's our atomic number. So on... The periodic table, when we're using it to make our Bohr models, the row that the element is in is equal to the number of rings that that element has around its nucleus. So if I were to look for any element in row one, any element in row one would have one ring, any element in row two would have two rings, and row two comes straight across from beryllium to boron, and row three Come straight across from magnesium to aluminum. Okay, so they go across like so. So in our notes, we want to say that row one, our elements in row one have one ring. Our elements in row two have two rings. Okay, and that'll make more sense when we get to drawing them soon here. Remember that we learned in our previous video that protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, the electrons are on the rings, and for an atom, the number of electrons equals the number of protons because atoms don't have a charge. So my proton, my positive parts of my proton, have to equal the negative parts of my electron because they're going to balance each other out and have zero as my overall charge, so no charge on an atom. We also can remember that our number of protons is equal to the atomic number. The way that we represent our electrons in the Bohr model are dots around the rings, and our rings are our energy levels. Okay. So if we look at row one, row one on our periodic table is here, our period. It has two elements in row one. We have hydrogen, and then we come straight across to helium. So hydrogen and helium. So I have row one has two elements, and therefore maximum in ring number one can have two electrons. If we look at row two, row two has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements in it. Therefore, Row two can only have eight electrons max on rings two. And if we look, row three is the same. So row two and three have eight elements wide. And so it has eight total spots for electrons on that ring. Row four 
has even more elements. If I count across, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So row 4 has 18 elements. Therefore, we can put 18 electrons maximum on ring 4. We might do something on that has five rings. And if we get there again, because row five looks just the same as row four, we can have 18 electrons there as well. So let's go ahead and practice drawing some Bohr models. So the first one I'm going to draw is chlorine. And I can see my atomic symbol here. I have 35 over 17 and Cl. Remember that 35 is a mass number. And 17, this bottom number, is my atomic number. Okay, my atomic number. So same thing for potassium. This is my mass number. 19 is my atomic number. And for strontium, my mass number and atomic number. And we can recall that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. And then for us, it's also equal to the number of electrons because here I just have three different atoms. So let's start with chlorine. So we'll do this example first. I'm going to cover up the other two so that way we can stay focused on my example here. So chlorine, I'm going to draw my dot in the center for my nucleus. And according to my symbols here, my atomic number is 17. This means that my number of protons equal to my atomic number, so protons, P positive for protons, is 17. I'm going to wait on my neutrons. Then my electrons, because I just have atoms here, my electrons equal to my number of protons, so this is also 17. And then remember, neutrons we can get by taking our mass number and subtracting from that our atomic number. So my mass number is 35 minus my atomic number of 17. So I get 18 for my number of electrons. Now I need to figure out how many rings does chlorine have. If I look for chlorine on the periodic table, I can see chlorine here. This shows that chlorine is in row 3. So chlorine is going to have 3 rings around the nucleus. So 1, 2, Three. Now my first ring represents my first row of the periodic table, the elements. So my first ring I'm going to put two dot because I have one, two spaces here. And my second ring represents my second energy level. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements wide. So I'm going to have eight dots on my second ring. And then chlorine is here. To get to chlorine, I'm at spot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So chlorine is going to have 7 dots or electrons on my fourth ring. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I like to put them together because this represents Lewis dot diagrams, which we'll get to later, so it's just a good habit to be in. So as we can see, here is my Bohr model for chlorine. Now I know that these dots are electrons, but I also need to identify what's in the nucleus. So I'm gonna draw an arrow to my nucleus. I'm gonna say that in my nucleus is where my protons and neutrons are. So inside my nucleus, I have 17 protons and 18 neutrons. So now I have an accurate description of what my element looks like or my atom looks like and I can see my protons and neutrons and my electrons around. So let's do our next example. On our next example we have potassium. We have our mass number and our atomic number so we can fill these in first. My atomic number I have is 19. Remember that the atomic number is equal to my number of protons. So I have 19 protons. We're going to skip neutrons for now. 
my electrons, electrons are equal to my protons because I have no charge. So I have 19 electrons. And then remember, neutrons we get, neutrons are equal to my mass number minus our atomic number. So in this case, my neutrons is my mass number, 39, minus my atomic number of 19, which gives me 20 neutrons. Okay. Now I'm going to go and draw my nucleus, my hard sphere in the center. And then I need to figure out how many rows or rings does potassium have. I need to find potassium on my periodic table. And when I do that, I see potassium located here. Potassium is in row one, two, three, four, in row four. So when I draw potassium, I'm going to have four rings. One, two, three, four. And just try to make them as circular as you can. So now that I have my rings drawn, I can go ahead and put in my electrons. So remember that first ring represents my first energy level, and I have two places for electrons. So I have two dots on my first one. Then my second energy level has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My next row, I have eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then in my fourth row, I'm at potassium, which is my first one. So I just have one dot on my outermost ring. So one dot there. Last thing we need to do is identify what is in our nucleus. So we put an arrow pointing to our nucleus. And in our nucleus is our protons and neutrons. So I say 19 protons, 20 neutrons. Last example, strontium. Strontium has atomic number 38. That's its atomic number. I can write that in for my number of protons. Neutrons, mass number minus atomic number. So 88 minus 38 is 50, so 50 neutrons, and my electrons equal my protons, so I have 38 here as well. Strontium, when I look for it on the periodic table, is here, it's number 38, and we can see that that is in row five, so I'm gonna have five rings around strontium. So I'm gonna put in my nucleus and then five rings. Start to get kind of big here, okay? And now I need to fill in my electrons. Now we can recall and take a look that all of these inner rings, except for the outside one, are filled. So the first ring gets two, row one has two, row two and three each have eight. And row four has 18, row four has 18, so I'm gonna put 18 dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then strontium in my fifth row here is one, two over, so just two electrons on my outermost ring. So that is drawing Bohr models of atoms. What if I had something called an ion or an isotope? Well, let's first think back to what an atom is. Remember, an atom has no charge. My atomic number equals my number of protons, which equals my number of electrons, because it is a neutral charge or no charge. An ion has a charge. Okay, and it's going to have a charge because it either has more or less electrons. So the electrons are going to change. So for an ion, has a change 
in electrons. So an ion has a change in electrons. If I lose electrons or have less electrons than protons, I'm going to have a positive charge because protons are positive and electrons are negative. So more protons, less electrons gives an overall positive charge. If I have more electrons than protons, then I'm going to have more negative things than positive things. So overall, my charge is going to be negative. Okay. The other thing I can have is an isotope. Now, an isotope is different than an ion or an atom because it has a different mass number, which means that the number of neutrons is now different. So if I look at my three examples here of chlorine, I have my symbols listed here. First thing we can pick out right away is this guy has this minus one charge in the upper right-hand corner. This is its charge. Okay, and this right away tells us that we have an ion. Okay. Then we need to figure out if we have an isotope. Now, one of these is an ion, one of them is an isotope. Isotopes have a different mass number. So if I look at my mass numbers, I have 35, 35, and 38. So because this one has a different mass number, That means that this must be my isotope. Because this one is normal, that means this is my atom. Now we know from before, from previously, how to draw the Bohr model for my chlorine atom. This is the atom. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that for my atom here. So chlorine was in row four, so I'm going to draw my nucleus with four rings. Okay. Remember, on my innermost ring, I have two dots for my first row. So ring number one has two dots. Ring number two has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots. Ring number three has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots. Ooh, did I draw too many rings? I drew too many rings. You should only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pretend this outside ring doesn't exist. Only one, three rings. I'm sorry. I messed that up. I wish I was perfect, but I'm not. So I apologize. Chlorine is in row three. I should have three rings here. Then I have my nucleus. And my nucleus, I need to tell my number of protons and neutrons. But we don't know that yet. So we need to go ahead and figure that out. Remember, protons equal my atomic number. So my atomic number is 17, so that's my number of protons. The atom, my number of protons, equals my number of electrons. So I also have 17 electrons. And then my neutrons, just like before, neutrons equal my mass number minus my atomic number. So mass number of 35 minus 17 is 18. So that means in my nucleus here, which is where my protons and neutrons are, I have 17 protons and 18 neutrons. All right, now for the ion. Again, I have my nucleus and I have three rings, not four, three, okay. I need to figure out where my electrons are and what is in my nucleus, my protons and my neutrons. So I need to go ahead and figure out protons, neutrons, and electrons. Remember, my protons is still equal to my atomic number. So no matter what, I have 17 protons in my chlorine ion. My neutrons is my mass number minus atomic number. So 35 minus 17, just like we did before is 18. So I can add in 17 protons, 18 neutrons. But now I need to figure out my electrons. I have a negative one charge. If I have a negative one charge, that means that I have more electrons than protons. If I have a negative one charge, it means I have one more 
electron than protons. So if I have 17 protons, I must have 18 electrons. Now to draw those in, just like before, my first ring has two, my second ring has eight, and now all the rest of my electrons have to go on this outermost ring. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total, but I need 18. <laughs> Excuse me. So 18 electrons must go on this outermost. Sorry, eight electrons must go on that outermost ring. So this is different from my atom in that my atom was missing an electron here. My ion has gained that electron and it's now there. Now my isotope is different from my ion and atom and then it has a different mass number. So just like before, I have my nucleus and three rings because chlorine is still in row three no matter if it's an ion, isotope, or atom. I need to identify what's in my nucleus, my protons and neutrons. And to do that, I need to know my number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So I can see that I have 17 as my atomic number still, so that's my number of protons. Isotopes have a different mass number, but nothing else. That means my protons, just like before, have to equal my number of electrons. And my neutrons I get from taking mass number minus atomic number. So my mass number of 38 minus 17, 38 minus 17, and I get 21. So 21 neutrons. So that means that when I write this in, I'm going to have 17 protons, 21 neutrons, and then I'm going to fill in my electrons. Notice that I have 17 electrons in my isotope, just like I did in my atom, so my dots are going to look the same. Two on my innermost ring, eight on my second ring, and then seven, because it's the seventh one over, on my outermost ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. As always, if you have any questions, make sure you write those down at the bottom of your page or in your notebook, and then we'll start class with those tomorrow. Have a good rest of your day.